Hello and welcome to the Quiet Life Podcast again. I'm Pat Yates. We have a fun conversation today. A lot of times I like to just bring entrepreneurs on and pick their brains. And I happened to run across Dan Cass when I was out on some uh, some Shark Tank speaking events. We would go and do pitches where we listen to products and talk to people about how to build their business, maybe position to exit, whatever we discuss. Obviously, I'm an entrepreneur and build products, build companies, so I always like to reactionable. Dan was always one of these guys who was so much fun to have a conversation with because not only he invented a product, he used to be in the uh, design and, and manufacturing industry, especially in engineering, and he actually took his passion and turned it into making a product, has traveled for, to Japan to start working on electric cars early in the 2000s and pancake that into a business career where he's now an entrepreneur with a great product that's growing amazingly in retail and online. So Dan owns the product Little Speaker, and that's L-I-D-D-L-E. Cool play on names for that if you want to look up Little Speaker. But Dan is such a dynamic and fun guy. I just wanted to bring him on and see what kind of tips he would have to be able to talk about your business and maybe you talk about developing a product you've always thought about and asking where to start. And again, we want to make sure that if you ever have any questions at Quiet Light, you can reach out to me, Pat Yates, at pat at quietlight.com. But I'm hoping this conversation today will help you if you're looking to manufacture a product, develop it, or get into business in general. So I'm excited to talk to inventor Danny. So let's get right to it. Danny, welcome to the Quiet Light Podcast, man. I'm excited to have you here today. Well, Pat, it's an honor to be with you, to be with a legend like yourself. Yeah, I don't know about legend. You can ask my wife about that. She would say legend in my own mind, maybe. That's probably <laughs> where it resides. But uh, you and I go back. We met each other at a lot of shows. You know, we're traveling around. We uh, travel around with some Shark Tank group and other people. We talk and show products and and develop. I, one thing, I'd love for the people to understand who you are. This is more an entrepreneur conversation. So tell everybody your name, where you're from, and all that uh, little stuff, and maybe a little bit of background on you. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Pat. Well, Legends, I think any of us that are entrepreneurs, we turn into legends because we create some novel products, right? But a background about myself. Um, so my name's uh, Inventor Danny, everybody calls me. Uh, I am from the Thumb Coast in Michigan, you know, so we can see Canada from our house. There you so, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So about me, though, um, I got a master's in electrical. So I, I was actually in the field of electrical. And at a young age, I, I got bored, right? I mean, I got bored out of my mind. And I always knew I wanted to get more into engineering and stuff. So fortunately, I got headhunted by a company that works in automotive. And I worked on the electric car in the year 2000 in Japan. They were looking for a guy that knew AC and DC. And like I say, I hit my apex in that career. And I'm like, let's go for it. You know, I want to learn something new. So I went to I went to Japan, you know, and I started working on this technology with an automotive company. We were the largest wiring harness manufacturers in the world, privately owned. Um, and what was so cool about it is they trained me to be a reverse engineer. So, I mean, when you look at products and you look at anything, it doesn't matter. There's always a better mousetrap. And we always talk about that, you know, if we are in a room or whatever. And we all got to catch a mouse. We got to catch it in a different way. But it's all on the same real estate. So they taught me how to look at product, look at things and solve problems in different forms. So I was fortunate to do that, work on the electric car, brought the first hybrid electric vehicle to North America. There was a group of us. It wasn't just me. Wow. You know, my part was the connectors and the batteries. And so when we talk about like the Teslas and stuff like that, I actually worked on a Panasonic battery before Tesla was born. <laughs> wow. So, so it, that's where it started. So, um, you know, I was trained to be a reverse engineer. Then that, they career pathed me and sent me back to school to learn business because I didn't have the wow. business mindset. Right. So they go, you got so go you back sort to of school. walked, you, you sort of walked into something that not only did it give you like a, yeah, I don't, I don't know the best way to put this, an, an ability to look at products and say, hey, here's how it can be better. This is how I can improve it, which is a great trait for an entrepreneur. But they also sent you to business school to be able to learn how to grow it and market it, correct? I mean, like that had to be Absolutely. insane. So when, where were you living in Japan? That had to be a real pivot for you to be able to spend time over there, right? Well, I didn't have to stay there. So I had to go back and ah. forth, right? So we went back okay. and forth there. And then we took everything from there and we were moving it to Mexico because we were bringing it to North America. So my postal route, you know, go to Japan, grab what we need. And I had my interpreters here that helped me out of corporate, which was in Michigan. 
And then they said, you know, we'll help you start bringing it, the, everything over. You need to implement it in Mexico. And that's where I started doing my postal route to Monterey, Mexico, wow. on a regular basis, working on high voltage power connectivity that does distribution. So, but that's where it all started, uh, working that, on all that That has stuff. to be, that had to be kind of wild to be on the infancy. Like, I know electric cars were worked on before that. I get it. But it was a developing technology where it wasn't that big. That had to be kind of fun just to go through that process at that time, right? 24 years ago. Everybody talks about electric cars wow. today. I worked on it 24 years ago. So I tell everybody, I feel like one of the pioneers, <laughs> right, <laughs> that actually worked on this stuff. But it, it taught me so much. And my people I work with were my greatest mentors because they they walked me through my weaknesses. I mean, we all have our strengths and weaknesses, and that's what you really need to find out. And so when the the, the crash hit, you know, that's when, uh, you know, my automotive days were kind of done, just like everybody else when they started falling down like dominoes, right? So, because that's what we are. That's what our state lives on is automotive business. But um, fortunately for me, you know, I was picked up uh, right away and I was relocated again out in Denver, Colorado. Um, I was uh, I was headhunted to go out there and uh, work on renewable power with battery technology, right? And wind energy, solar and energy storage. So, and I got, I got picked up a couple of times. I became a single dad out there raising two boys. My boys wow. were seven and 11 when I started raising them myself. And um, boy, you want to talk about learning something. This, this is another piece of the entrepreneur spirit because anybody that takes care of their children by themselves, you know, the single moms, single dads, you learn so much and everybody always wondering, how do you do it? How do you do it? You just do it. But you always so. You also see all the problems that we struggle with on our home life, not only a business life, but and this kind of opened up my mind more and more. And so long story short, I was head on it again to be the vice president of a subsidiary of Lloyd's of London for loss control and engineering on forensic investigation of battery technology. <laughs> so <laughs> you, had to make cars, that, right? you made that change. <laughs> And now you're working on a new progressive thing and you had family stuff. I agree with you that sometimes, you know, especially motherhood and fatherhood, even if you have a team out there, it's not the easiest thing. So that had to add a little bit of stuff there. Let me ask this question about the time you were spending in Japan. Was it was it the electrical manufacturing, all the manufacturing and, and design you were doing, or was the business training what you picked up the most on? Was was the was the business something that projected you to go on and decide, hey, I'm I'm gonna stop thinking like an engineer and I'm gonna think like an entrepreneur? Is that what that really kicked in or was it before that yeah so well going to japan you know i mean we i was thrown in you know i, I was one of the late guys coming into the game and uh but we knew it was coming over and uh, long story short it started with the toyota prius the prius started being built in the 90s right and so we took that technology and we brought it over to ford is what we did so we brought the first ford hybrid electric escape to north america and, you know, but that taught me how to build a product from nothing to something, right? And so we did that and it, it opened up eyes for me. Because, like I say, when I was a vice president of loss control and engineering, um, our company got bought out. So we got bought out from the president down to marketing and I was snowballed in that. And they told me I couldn't work and they put me in what they called the garden leave. And so when I couldn't work, I'm like, I, I just can't sit still. I'm, I was happy to take care of my kids, but that's when I started inventing for myself. And that's when it took off. Wow. That, so progressing into that and understanding the business obviously stoked your fire a little bit. Now, you talked about the time you were in Arizona and you worked on a lot of stuff that had to do with batteries as well. When was it that you first took your own entrepreneurial step? I mean, maybe it was in conjunction with working with a company as a side hustle, or when did it when did it first kick in for you that you knew you could create products, especially at the consumer level? Uh, well, in the automotive side, it, it actually started in 2005. So we actually, so we're working on some mandates, which um, we call it the ROHS, which is the restriction of hazardous substances. My job was to design a cable that met those standards that we could actually recycle and use something, make it lighter, uh, make it go faster, tra transfer more data through. And, and I did so, but I did it with a guy I met and um, I ended up working with him on a, like a side gig um, and that's how it really started in 2005. But 
I didn't really take the big, uh, the big step by myself until um, of my own patents and technology in 2015. That's when I started filing patents in my own name. Wow. So you're almost a decade in, in, in doing your own products and obviously from the things that you learned. So I know we're going to go into the little speaker in a minute, which is one of the cooler names I've ever seen, just so we, people will know. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Was this the first product you did or what were some other products that you invented? Did you just go out and start making things and seeing if they would plug into business? No, no. So um, the first thing I did is I created a shelf platform that goes by your bedside. And I, I patented it for, in audio, video, and electronic charging technology. So what I did by that, think of a table by your bed. It slides underneath your mattress. Yeah. Set your phone on there. Set your electronics on there. It will charge. So I came up with that. And I own all that real estate in those areas. And in other words, you can charge multiple devices at once. You could watch a movie on the ceiling. You could have a speaker that was built into the bottom of it to allow you to hear the Bluetooth connectivity. So that's part of my patents. And not only did I do it for that, and I always remember my Shark Tank days because I watched Shark Tank just like everybody from year one. And they always say, Lori, Lori one of Lori's favorite things, always make something that's from kids to adults. Right. And so I had the adult things covered. So I said, okay, I got to make the kid thing. Well, I designed Mickey Mouse, which was the Mickey Mouse shelf. For Disney, and I actually have that in a patent. And not only did I design that, they liked me. I designed the product for the movie Toy Story. Also, then I started working with the Simpsons at Century Fox on designs for them. And then we were working on stuff at Warner Brothers. Uh, long story short, the pandemic struck, you know, and then uh, that took care of that stuff. <laughs> but in 2020, Pat, I got to be honest, we were the second hottest startup worldwide at Consumer Electronics Show with that shelf that did audio, video, and electronic charging. Our name wow. was listed next to GE in the smart home area. And everybody said, never seen an all-in-one product that can do that. So, and, and I got patents, like I say, I got patents in audio, video, and electronic charging technology. Some of my patents are infrared and radio frequency technology, where you actually harvest the energy out of the air and you convert it to DC where we never plug in ever again. That's the patents I hold. Wow. So so then you you've invented some products. You took some out. Maybe some were successful, some weren't. Let's let's fast forward a little bit. You you now have a really cool product called the little speaker. I'll let you kind of introduce that. And you actually spell it differently because of your name, which is awesome. And the whole yeah. product. So how did you start the idea for this? You see a lot of electronics out there. You're clearly an electronics guy. You got into the speaker thing of Bluetooth with phones. Tell us all about that because I was fascinated by the product. I use it as well. Yeah, you know, that product I just talked about, our IntelliShelf, had the speakers molded into the bottom of the platform. And during the pandemic, a customer called us and said, I seen your interviews at CES, you know, Consumer Electronics Show, and I see you're all over the news and wondering if you could make us a shelf for our, our recreational vehicle, which is an RV camper, right? And they go, but we would like to see the speaker if you could remove it so they can take it outside and use it by the campfire or take it uh, to the picnic table. And light bulbs started going off, Pat. And I'm like, okay, here we are. Uh, the iPhone 12 is coming out, right? And so, and we started studying speaker technology. And what's a speaker do? A speaker only sits on a table or a countertop. You know, they, people have magnets that are on the outside that you can stick it on something. But what we did that's different, Pat, is we put the magnets inside the housing that's never been done. That's right. our core of our patent right there, where we're able to not create interference and have a magnet underneath the speaker without creating interference inside a housing that goes through a piece of plastic and will stick to anything. So anything wow. steel. And then we, you know, we created the ring that allows you to stick the speaker on anything that's not metal, like wood, plastic, or glass. So you get two of those adhesive rings also. But that's where it came out from. It came out from a customer call during the pandemic to create this product. And we just studied it. We had a lot of time on our hands. And that's how we came up with it. 
That's incredible. Do you happen to have one there on the desk you can show people? I, the video will be out there. I know a lot of people are listening to your car. Do not look at your screen if you're in your car. You can come back <laughs> and find it. But Danny's going to show us the little speaker here. Show everybody how it works. It's, yeah, it's yeah, actually yeah, really yeah. cool, folks. I've I've seen this several times when I've been with Danny, especially at shows. Go so, so go ahead. It comes in a nice box with a window, you know, and I'll just open this one up that's right here on my desk right now. So this this here is uh one of our this is actually our most popular color. It's the black, the color black. It's the little speaker. And I mean it's tiny. So but Pat, what we did is we actually put the magnets inside the housing. So nobody's ever been able to do that. Like I say, most speakers just sit on the table or countertop. We put it inside the housing, and I can stick it on anything still. I can put it on my car bumper, my barbecue grill, my refrigerator, anywhere. And wherever, Pat, this is the most coolest thing, wherever you don't have metal, in the box, because we wanted to make sure we could stick to everything. So in the box, we give you these little adhesive rings. And I don't know if you can see them or not. I'll bring them up close. Yeah, we see I'll go this way. So yeah. you just peel and stick so this is sticky look it's stuck on my finger right now see it right so wherever i put this ring the speaker will stick so you know since everybody's watching here i put one right on my shirt for you right there i know it's black my shirt's dark but check that out there it is Pat. It's now i can hear you singing out of your chest that's just, that's something <laughs> that's it that's so, so awesome so folks remember too this is little speaker you can find it you know online at l-i-d-d-l-e not little like l-i-t-t-l-e and tell them how you came up with the name that's fun wow uh, the, the names the name is interesting so my my son uh, my youngest son we just took him to uh you know we moved him into his college dorm at a university called embry riddle university yeah part of which it. is in in daytona beach so my my two kids are pilots so we took our kiddo down there and moved him into Embry Riddle. And everybody's going, Welcome to Riddle. Welcome to Riddle. Well, you gotta remember, I'm inventing this thing at the same time, trying to come up with a name. And uh, and I'm like, Riddle, Riddle. I said, I kind of like that name. It's got it's got a little slang, you know, and I'm like, light bulb just went off. I'm like, my speaker's little, <laughs> you know, and that's, that's how we did it. And that's it's how just we did a it, play actually. on words, but it's so yeah. easy to remember because it actually defines the product in a fun yeah. way that's a little different. I just think that's amazing. So let, let me ask this: as you it, it, you know, as as you get going through your business venture, so you were a, a product engineer, then you went to business school, but you had not been an entrepreneur. You said even until 2015. So you come up with this product that's obviously super successful. How did you learn the rest of it? Did you just was it baptism by fire? Did you work with any mentors? How did you decide? Because I think a lot of people out there are sitting thinking, how do I make the leap? I'm an engineer, too. I'm sitting at my desk nine to five, nine to five, nine to five. Yeah. And I can probably do what he's doing. What made you take the leap? I think that's one thing people would really want to know. I think uh, I, I was I was gifted in a couple of ways. One, understanding and seeing things different, you know, as a reverse engineer. And then, two, being trained also to be a technical sales manager. So whatever we built in my automotive days. You know, we had to we had to sell it, you know, to the big OEMs of GM, Ford, Chrysler, whoever it is. So communicating with people became a natural to me and selling something that we invented was a passion. And that's kind of like the entrepreneur spirit right there. So so it didn't matter what I made. It was my baby. But I wanted to tell the world about it and show all the features and the problems that it solved. Right. So. Yeah, it was a learning curve. There's no doubt. I mean, especially this is the most important thing, Pat. And going back to what you said about people working in front of their desk every day. When I worked for a company that was $17 billion, you know, I went to a trade show. Everybody knew who I was. They were looking for me, right? They wanted to talk to me because I'm working on futuristic right. technology. When I went on my own, I thought I could carry that same torch. Here I am going to my first trade show, you know, and it's like, nobody knows me. <laughs> I was a nobody. So I had to learn how to market myself, market my brand, market my name. And, and so we started learning ourselves from all our mistakes. And what we, we learned that works for us is we use PR for uh, traditional marketing. You know, I have a PR group. Right. And then I do my digital marketing, uh, you know, for social media and stuff. No, I hired out people for social media, but I'll tell you, Pat, no one knows your product better 
than you. So you should really be the brand ambassador if you want to be in your own entrepreneur. That's the way it works for us. That's why everybody knows me as Inventor Danny, you know, the little speaker guy. And so because I brand it, brand it, brand it. And so what did it, when they search it, they find it. And my name's everywhere. They write articles about me. They do interviews just like you. And it's it helps build my SEO. And that's what carries me. So when I spend money on Amazon for ab- advertising, I don't spend that much because people find me from my social. And so it really helps out. That's definitely the case. I think that you're right. I think the more that you get into that, the more you can build it. And I love the idea of people understanding that you're the best to be able to take your brand out. And while some people don't have enough time in the day to be able to do every social covering and make sure they have everything done, there is time to be able to make that work. So let me ask this. As you came in, it wasn't always going to be easy. There were things you probably struggled with, things you weren't great at that you had to really learn. What were the kind of headwinds you felt when you were first launching your business? What were things were difficult for you to get past as a new entrepreneur? Yeah, no, there's, there's definitely headwinds. (laughs) You know, everything's challenging. Getting into the buyer network at the big box store was probably one of the hardest things I've ever dealt with. Selling online, you know, we're, we're, we're successful at selling online, you know, and spreading news and advertising, doing, you know, boosting our post or whatever. We did that to drive traffic. There's no doubt about that. But trying to get into the buyer network, you know, it's like, it's a relationship issue. So what we got kind of fortunate, you know, where um, we, we signed up with Range Me. And, you know, we and, we and still to this day, we get a lot of people looking at us, but, you know, nobody will call, right? We're a new company. But Lowe's actually had a pitch contest called Into the Blue. And so we filled wow. it all out, right? So it was a pitch contest, filled out our thing, and uh, Lowe's accepted. They had over 1,000 people that applied, and it was kind of like a Shark Tank thing, you know? Pitch your product to Lowe's. We're looking for new products, innovation, right? Innovation creates competitive advantage. So we pitched our product to Lowe's, um, and they narrowed that list from over 1,000 companies down to 125 companies to come into their new corporate office and pitch to buyers. And there was three levels, Pat. So first level, you pitch to a buyer. If they like it, you go, you get, you get yourself a blue ticket. And then you go to the next level. If you pitch it to a bigger group of buyers, if they like it, you get yourself a gold ticket. Then you get to the executive bro, you know, the VPs. If they like it, you get a platinum ticket. Well, the little speaker, I'm proud to say, is in 1,362 low stores nationwide. Wow. And we were the number one product for their pitch contest in this category. Number one. That's absolutely amazing. So they, how many people were in that? I, I, I guess, do you even know, or do they go through different layers of putting people in? There was only 15 people that got the platinum ticket and each ticket is rated at a different dollar. So when we did it, because we were year one, it was like $50,000 for gold, hundred thousand for, or no, was, uh, I'm sorry, 50,000 for, Blue, hundred thousand for a gold ticket, platinum tickets with a two hundred thousand dollar purchase order. Well, Pat, I can honestly say that my purchase order was more than two times that because they loved our product so much. So we did really, really well. And you know, I just had my call with my group there. We sold twenty eight thousand pieces in a matter of six weeks. That's so incredible. for the holiday, so your sell through has been good too, and you're getting ready to expand that. It's amazing. Yeah. So and once we hit that, yeah, once we hit that sell through, now you know what's happening, Pat. I just had other retailers reach out to me. I didn't have to call them. <laughs> now they all want to be a part of it. It's amazing, amazing because what what set you on the process of that? How'd you find out that from Lowe's, or was it just publicized? Did you find someone that told yeah. you? Yeah, no, it was publicized. Um, actually, it was on our Range Me. So we signed up for a company called Range Me, where you submit your product and and you know you can submit it to all the buyers. That's the only way you're going to get in, but it's still a relationship thing. And so Range Me, um, we actually did Range Me for free. Today we are members of Range Me. Now we are members, and um, but yeah, that's how we got through. We that's because you know entrepreneurs we we don't have a lot of money. You know we're we're trying to get our product off the ground and do it as working out of our living rooms, right? And so. Um, but that's how that's how we did it. And it's no difference when I took this to the market for the first time. I tell everybody the same same story. 
You know, I don't know if it's going to sell. I don't know if it's going to sell. Well, we didn't know what the little speaker was going to do. So we took a thousand units to a trade show, like I, like I said earlier, and we sold out in six hours, thousand units and wrote 80 additional purchase orders. That's how I knew I had something. You know, that is great. So again, we're speaking with Inventor Danny with the little speaker, L-I-D-D-L-E. You want to make sure everybody has a chance to do that. See how it goes on the back of the phone too. So I, I what's amazing is, is you took a career in product development, found out how to reverse engineer things, which would have you improve about any product out there, got a business degree, then became an entrepreneur. And you're killing it, obviously, with the Lowe's thing. What, what's in store for Little Speaker in 24, other than Lowe's continuing to, to grow? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, we're, we're still focused on Lowe's, and now we got some other retailers calling also. But, you know, our, our goal is obviously continue to work with the direct-to-consumer, the DTC side. Um, we love that side of the business. So because, you know, we're just shipping on a regular basis and stuff. And, you know, I, I do my live shows sometimes and uh, I'll get on live and on my social media. And the highest viewing I had on my live show, you know, welcome to Inventor Danny's live show, right? Here I am talking about the little speaker. Pat, this is, this is I had 354,000 people watching me on my live show. And we sold out everywhere. (laughs) So everywhere. (laughs) So you're just killing it. And all these things are continuing to grow. I think what's funny about this is, and I'll brag on you a little bit. I, Dan and I sort of, inventor Danny and I sort of met each other, you know, at a, at a show when I was there speaking and doing pitch pros. But every time I talk to you, it just gets more exciting. You're always fun to be around. You're always fun to talk to. What is your best philosophy if you're talking to people about, like if they're out there saying, you know what, inventor Danny, he may be smart, but I'm just as smart, but I got to learn what he learns. What would be the first thing you tell people to do if they decide they want to try to take that entrepreneurial path, which obviously you're killing versus working in, 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 you know, product development, let's say, if they want to control their own income, say they want to retire, maybe they want to do this. What would your advice be? Yeah, no matter what the product is, you know, make sure it solves a problem. You got to solve a problem. And then the this number two is, does this product hit the mass market, you know? Because, you know, some people invent some stuff that, uh, hey, I can only use it uh, in a certain area, right? And then, or is it seasonal? You no, know, you want to develop a product that hits the mass market from kids to adults, and it can be used year round. So I know we all have great ideas. So, but that's what I focus on, step one and step two. Step three, then I do my due diligence. You know, I'll start looking on uh, online to see if anybody's got anything similar to what I have. You know, then I'll start looking at the patent offices. I'll, I'll go to uh, the crowdfunding campaigns and see if anybody come up with anything like this. Because I don't want to spend all this money and time if it's something out there. But I'll, I'll be honest, Pat, it doesn't matter if something's out there. And if you can make it better, you can reverse engineer it and get around a patent. There's, there's always a way. It's the guys that have the continuation patents are the ones you're never going to get around. And those are the guys like me. Because most people only file one patent, they get it, and they, they think they got 20 years of coverage. Well, Pat, I filed my first patent in 2015. That product's still not fully accepted to the market, right? Wow. But my continuations of that product, which created the little speaker, references back to that date that gives me an extra 20 years. So I just got another patent on that shelf platform uh, in December of 23. So now I'm good to 2043 with my patents. And that's where the, the, nobody can get around me. Great idea, right? Even though I'm not taking it to the market yet because I'm so absorbed on this, but um, you can, you once you build it, you build off it, you create your tree of where it can go, where it can be and stuff. And that's how you get multiple patents and claims. And everybody says, hey, I got a patent. Well, that's great. You got a patent. But what does your claims say in your patent? Because that's where guys like me will say, well, he only claimed this. So you know what? I can claim X, Y, Z So and get and get around it. Yeah, you know, that's great advice. We always tell people trademarks and patents are so big if you're coming into selling quite light. Obviously, you've taken care of that. Something we always encourage people to do. So let me just a couple other questions and I'll kind of sew this up. Are there other products you're working on, alliterations of this or other things to bring to market? Uh, that could be completely different. 
Yeah, you don't have yeah, to give yeah. up trade secrets, by the way, if you're working on something. But just curious, no, what no, else I, going I, on I, with I you? Can, I can tell you what's cool about the little speaker, Rev One of the little speaker. You know, we we transfer data two times faster than older speaker technology when we came out with this in 20. You know, we we started developing in 21. So we transfer data two times faster when we go four times the distance. In other words, I can be 30 feet away. But I can also, Pat, pair two of these together to give me total stereo surround sound. So I could take two speakers, put them together, have surround sound. So what we did, what we're doing in 2024 is we're actually coming up with the one speaker. And it's called the Little Speaker Pro that's coming out where we actually, uh, it'll be two times louder. And it will have a microphone in it. It will have wireless charging in it um, and a bigger battery to last longer. That's We just passed our last audio test. Now we're going into full uh, tooling for it. Should be ready within about six weeks for the first prototype. And it's coming. I expect, you know, May 1, it'll be out the door. Somebody will have it in their hands. That's amazing. So you've got so much great stuff going on. And obviously, you know, we're working with you a little bit to try to help you get some other marketing help. If people ever need help, they can always reach out. But so Danny, if people want to get in touch with you, I, I know you're probably on LinkedIn. What's the best way to reach out if they wanted to talk to you? Yeah, you can find, definitely find me on LinkedIn. You can go to our website, um, you know, littlespeaker.com. There's an email right there that connects us right to our house box and I do get a lot of people asking me, you know, hey, I want to work on some stuff. And I'll I'll tell you, Pat, you know, I've worked on some stage shows with you now going out there, being a public speaker at trade events. And every advice I've given, everybody has been free. I never charged anybody for anything. And I give back because I don't want to see them drag through the mud, give up their equity, uh, pay X amount of dollars for someone to do it when they can do it themselves if they just have a little guidance. And I, I share that with anybody that asks me that question. As long as you can take constructive criticism, understand your strength and your weaknesses, because no matter what you build, your strengths, you're going to be buried with what you know to get it to market. On your weaknesses, you need to get someone to help you in that area and guide you and get some support. So don't spend all your money on everything. Spend your money on your weaknesses to get where you need to be. So if you're not an international guy, manufacturer, ask somebody to help you. So, and, and, and I help, I help a lot of people. You need a manufacturer? Yeah, I'll just send it over to my buddy. Yeah, I don't need nothing. You know, we'll, we'll just build it for you. And you can pay for the tooling and all. So we've done that a few times. And again, I never charged, never charged, Pat. I, I help people out. It's, it's giving back to people just like us. They want that financial freedom. That's what entrepreneurship is. Well, you know what? I usually talk a little bit about Quiet Light when I'm finishing up the podcast. So that gives me a real opportunity because that's exactly how we we feel. You know, we want to be actionable with helping people with their businesses. You know, we judge ourselves by the quality and number of conversations, not whether or not we get closings. And I think when you and I talk, that seems to come out because I'm always willing to help anything you have. We always try to yeah. talk ideas of how you can do it. I think the group you put around it is really amazing. And I hope people do if they have inventing ideas or if they say, hey, where do I start? Maybe reach out, but definitely go to the little speaker and pick one of these up. These things are really, really slick. Dan, we uh, inventor Danny, I got to call you that. It's like an official title. You can't like call <laughs> fair by her name. Inventor Danny, man, it's been awesome having you on the Quite Light Podcast today. I appreciate you joining me. Thank you, Pat. Greatly appreciated.